Robert speaking. Hello. Um, I promised to call you at 9.30. I'm sorry I'm a little bit late. That's all right. How are you doing? That's all right. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for getting no back to me. No All right. Uh, How are you doing this morning? Are you doing okay? I'm exhausted. Uh, oh, goodness. So, are, are things getting any better in your new place? Uh, well, uh, there's a lot to sort out. It's, uh, yeah. it's only a small bungalow, and I've got probably about 150 boxes, so I have done some tidying. <laughs> oh, dear, mate. But there's a there's a That's lot a to do. <laughs> yes, it's it's not easy, is it? Moving house is quite it, it, the quicker you can get settled, the better. But um, it can be quite traumatic. Yes, yes. Yeah. I wish I hadn't so got rid of a tall. I I got rid of a tall boy. I gave it to a charity shop, and I regret that now. I wish I'd kept a second one. But anyway, what's done is done. Yeah, tall boys are really good. Um, we've got one in the bedroom, and uh, yeah, if you, if you come confined on space it's a, it's a very good idea mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. yeah I, I'm, I was kind of I haven't had a chance so since we spoke on um, on Wednesday um, I was at work all day yesterday it was our congregation meeting last night yes um, haven't, I haven't had a great deal of time to um, to look into the uh, the Holy Spirit references I did briefly have a look and but I haven't got to a, you know, I haven't been able to give it the attention it, it deserves. I, I'd but, um, rather not discuss it then. Let, let's wait a month or so and get back to me in a month. Oh, I, no, I no. prefer to do one thing properly and then it's dealt with and we don't discuss it again. I, I don't want to deal with the same topic each week where we go over the same thing and a few more points Sorry, are added each, each, each no, week. I wasn't, I wasn't suggesting we oh, do. I, sure. I, was just, I was just letting you know where we are. Because you said the other day you wanted to talk about the kingdom. Mm-hmm. But um, you, you spoke at some length the other day about, um, I'm not even sure what the right terminology is from your perspective, but the fact that um, once a person is becomes a disciple of Christ, that, that you know, at that particular moment, that, that it's impossible for them to, to be able to, um, you know, kind of to lose out on that and... and I don't know quite. I can't use. I can't remember the form of words you used. But essentially, you were saying that you know, once you're saved, you're always saved. Well, I didn't use. That, that, I didn't use that form of form of words. No, no. But, I, I, but, that's why I said you couldn't. I, I didn't know the form yeah, of words um, you used. But essentially, if that's what we're you going to talk, saved. we talk about one chapter from your book. We don't deviate from that. And you have to give me time to prepare so I can actually read the chapter relevant oh. to that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not just, you know, prepared to sort of hide there and have a little chat. Because I've done that in the past. There was a Seventh-day Adventist pastor who came to my flat. He never answered any questions. He just gave me more and more books, photocopies and DVDs. Every ten minutes when he couldn't answer the question, he said, I'll get a book for you or a DVD for you. And he changed the topic and yeah, talked about sure. something else. But so I'm not doing that. So. Ed, no, no. <clears throat> <coughs> yeah. So Robert, Robert, just a minute. You, 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 respectfully, you seem <coughs> quite prickly. You seem quite prickly, and, and 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 I'm not quite sure why. All I'm doing is referencing something you talked about the other day, and I'm, I just wanted to ask you some questions about it. So it's not, you know, th this isn't a competition. No one's trying to score points. Okay. I'm not, you know, if, if you're really happy with what you believe, I'm really glad for you. All I wanted to do was so I say. Maybe you'd want to think about some of these references and actually give, you know, in the same way that I took a list of references from you the other day, I could give you some to think about. So, in other words, it would give you that time to think about it. I'm not, I don't want to put you on the spot. I want no, you I'm, to, I'm, to I, be, feel relaxed which, and, and, and happy. Yeah. Which chapter of the book is it? Because I'm, I'm only prepared to speak if we go through a certain chapter of your book, which I'm reading, Enjoy Life Forever. So, which chapter do you want me to read? Well, I'm really happy to go on the kingdom. It, it was it, right. Okay. I, 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 can, can we not have a conversation that that's just about a subject, or does it have to be a chapter in the book? Well, I'd I'd like to do a chapter in the book. Yeah. Okay. That, well, that's, that's what I'm okay. going go with, going let, through. Let, so, my job here, you know, it, it, the whole point the other day, as we as we said, is trying to uncover truth. It's not about. You know, you sit up with your opinion and you fight to the death to about that and then somebody else does that. The world's full of people who are sure they're right and a lot of them are wrong. You know, 
and, and the Pharisees are a very, very good example of that. So the whole point is the fact that we're teachable, we're malleable, and, and you know, if you're happy with what you believe, terrific. All I want to do is present to you a different viewpoint and, and perhaps a couple of verses that you might want to, you know, prayerfully consider. That's it. So, you know, if on you want to go topic? through the stuff on the kingdom, that's great, yeah. and we can do that happily. But, you know, I, I'm not quite sure I like the spirit of this because it's, I'll only do this and I'll only do that. I'm not trying to persuade you to do anything. I just want you to be happy. Yeah, well, I'm happy no, I, if we agree to look at one chapter of your book you tell me in advance which chapter to read which chapter to look at and that's what we look at ok I'll show, I'll, I will remember that in future yeah. alright so yeah. the other day we talked about chapters 31 32 and 33 yeah. which one would you like to do um, well I was looking at chapter 33 ok uh, last night um, if I just read the first few lines of paragraph three. Do you mind if I read that? So, yes, I do, because actually what we need to do, is, rather than going right into the detail, let's just establish what the kingdom is. <clears throat> because if we're, going to, if, if we're going to talk about what the kingdom will accomplish, we have to know what it is. Yeah? Rather than, you know, you want to just... I'm, I'm quite happy to talk about paragraph three once we've established what the kingdom is, but let's get that first we're then talking about a subsection of a subsection of a subsection. So let's just deal with the big thing, and then we can make sure we're on the same page. Well, then we'd have to go back okay. to chapter 31, which is what is God's kingdom. That's right. Exactly. That's right. So that's what... So, you know, that, that would be a logical place to start. Would you agree? Okay. Do you want me to read the first... Um, so, uh, I mean, I, pre presumably you've read it. Yeah, we can just, we yeah. Can just read paragraph for paragraph, if you like, or, or, or I can read the first part, or... How would you prefer to do it? What, what would make you feel comfortable? I, I, don't, I don't mind. We'll read in, we'll read in turn. Um, okay, all right. What is God's... So, um, if you want to read paragraph one, then, Robert, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay. What is God's kingdom? The main theme of the Bible has to do with God's kingdom. Jehovah will use that kingdom to accomplish his original purpose for the earth. What is the kingdom? How do we know it is ruling now? What, ha what has it already accomplished? And what will it do in the future? This lesson and the next two lessons will answer those questions. One. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so, um, so that, that's a nice kind of you know, preamble. Are, are you happy with that first paragraph? Well, the kingdom is the rule of of God through Christ. Okay. Um, Christ's kingdom was established at, I believe, at his resurrection. Colossians 1.13 uses um, a past tense in the English translation or aorist in Greek to say that he, he has um, established this kingdom of his son. Let me just go there, Colossians 1.13. Sorry, are we going to stick to the subject and, and just go through this logic logic? Are we going to go up onto your view of this? Because what we need to do is actually just answer what is it. In simple terms, what yeah. is it? Well, Colossians one thirteen answers it. Because I take my beliefs from the Bible, you see. And so well, the, the kingdom... Bible references... So, so, so the... Robert, this isn't a very pleasant conversation. Can we just be much friendlier? Because I'm a Bible student like you, and I deserve the respect that I'm giving you as well. And you're actually quite truculent. It's not a very pleasant thing to talk to you. So... Let's talk as friends. Okay. We're both discussing All right. the Bible. My, my, yeah. my, my, my understanding is that the kingdom of God was established at Christ's resurrection, according to Colossians 1.13. Established as what? Christ's rule over his people. Right. And, and how is that administered? What, 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 you know, what, what form does that take? Um, well, I, I'd like to read the verse, if I might. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah come, come um, on. Who has, who who hath, um, my normal Bible is packed away, I, I can't find it, so I'm reading from the King James. That's the past yeah, tense. Yeah. Okay. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. So, because it's in the past tense, I would understand, um, Matt, that this is 
the establishment of the of Christ's kingdom at his resurrection because Colossians was written about 30 years after Christ's resurrection and it talks about the kingdom in the past yeah. tense yeah okay so so we've said when it was established but we haven't said what it is it is the rule of Christ over his people right over okay. his church so, so, Right, so that's a very broad description. So, does does Jesus have co-rulers? Does, does is there someone that rules alongside him? You know, and where is it, where is it, and what does it do? Uh, and so, perhaps what we should do is mm -hmm. you know, and, and you know, read these verses because what we can do is we can look at one verse, which gives us uh, uh, you know some, some clues. And then, you know, we need to look at other verses to build up a more complete picture so that, um, you know, we, we understand it correctly. Okay, um, Matt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so let's just look at, let, let's look at um, the first subheading there. What is God's kingdom and who is its king? The kingdom is a government set up by Jehovah God. Its king, Jesus Christ, rules from heaven. The Bible says of Jesus, he will rule as king and then, you know, we'll put the full verse and it, and it ends forever. Mm -hmm. As the king of God's kingdom, Jesus will rule over everyone on earth. Okay, so, looking at those verses, looking at Matthew um, 4.17, mm -hmm. and from, from that time on, Jesus began preaching and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of the heavens has drawn near. So, by the way, I'm not objecting to what you've said. Jesus' kingdom was established at the point of his resurrection. You're quite right. We haven't established what it is, and, 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 and from that point, kind of what has it been doing, and, and, and you know, what, what will it ultimately do? So, um, so from that time on, Jesus began preaching, saying that repent for the kingdom of the heavens has drawn near. So, does it seem reasonable to you that, that at that point Jesus was the almost like the king designate? You know, the he hadn't proved himself faithful to death he was the um, the one that God had chosen but it was you know, that he one of the things he needed to do was to prove his integrity to death and that at that point he was you know, he could he could present an acceptable sacrifice to Jehovah in heaven and be anointed as the king not the appointee king, the actual king. Um, I, I would understand, Matt, in Matthew 4, 17, Christ is the appointed king, uh, but yeah. his, his kingship starts at his resurrection. Um, yeah. Yeah. Th there was one of your books I looked on, jw.org, I cannot for the life of me remember the page number, it was Reasoning in the Scriptures, and okay. it, it said that Christ became king over the Christian congregation at his resurrection in one place and then in another place it stated that Christ became king over the earth I think it was in 1914 <clears throat> right okay so um, what, what is the purpose here Robert it, it, it's, you're, you're citing two things you can't support well, I've and just then, moved. Then you, then you want, I've so, just you, moved flat. It's in your book, Reasoning in the Scriptures. I could go back to JW.org and try and find the references, but I remember there were two page references I found in Reasoning in the Scriptures. One which said Christ became king over the Christian congregation at his resurrection. I think I can't. I cannot remember the page number. And then there was another reference that said Christ became king. I think over the whole earth in 1914. So, so. No, it does, I, 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 I would very much doubt that it says that because um, Jesus is Jesus' kingdom will take over the rulership of the earth at Armageddon. You know, it will remove by force the governments at that time, and therefore he will therefore be the king who rule is ruling the earth. But until that time, Jesus' rule is. It's, 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 it's over his subjects. You know, the, the, um, you know, the, the governments of today and most people today don't accept Jesus' rulership. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so, so it, it's the extent.
extent of his rule, is that your question? Is, is he ruling over everybody today and does he have authority over them? Yes, he does. Do they accept it? No. And, and that goes for most Christian denominations. So, uh, what, what are your thoughts around? Um, so let's just go mm -hmm. to John um, 1836. Yeah. Yeah, my, my kingdom is no part of this world. Yeah. If my kingdom were part of this world, my tenants would have fought so that I should not be handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from this source. So, God's kingdom, where would it stand in terms of politics and in terms of, you know, kind of the way the world runs? What it's, was Jesus' view of, of the rulers at the time? It's a spiritual thing. to make him a ruler. Sorry, I interrupted you, Matt, sorry. So, right, and, 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 and do you recall how, how Jesus responded to when the people wanted to make him a ruler in, in Israel? They wanted to, yeah, they wanted him to represent them because he was a, could perform miracles and provide food and do all these wonderful things. Do you recall what he did? Um, John 1836, my kingdom is not of this world. I see the Christ kingdom as a spiritual kingdom at the moment. I believe at Christ's second coming, when he returns to this earth, it will then be a physical and a spiritual kingdom. But at the present time, Christ's kingdom is a spiritual kingdom only. Right. Well, that, so, it's, it, it's, so, um, so, is it populated by spirit creatures in the heavens? Do you, is that, it, it, or is it something that's just in our imagination? What, what, what do you mean by it's a spiritual kingdom? Well, Christ is is ruling from uh, a place that we can't see. He's not here on the earth. He is. He, Christ yeah. is in heaven, and um, his rule is over his his church, his people. Um, he is right. not okay. physically ruling um, the nations of this world at the moment. I mean, you know, President oh, Putin ru yeah. rules Russia. Biden rules America. Um, yeah. Macron rules France. Um, so, at Christ's second coming, I believe that the kingdom of the, this world will finish, and Christ's kingdom will then be a spiritual and a physical kingdom over yeah, the new heavens I mean, and the new earth. Very much so, absolutely, completely. So, you know, we're, we're, we're in violent agreement, that's absolutely exactly what it will do. So, um, um, and, and obviously the longevity, you know, Luke 1, 32 and 33 um, this one will be great and will be called son of the most high and Jehovah God will give him the throne of David his father and he will rule as king over the house of Jacob forever and there will be no end to his kingdom so mm -hmm. you know, we can so we can see that the kingdom once established will, you know, will continue to rule and then the extent of its rule will change at different points in time so as you quite rightly said uh, now it is a spiritual kingdom it rules from the heavens most people don't even know it's there and it, even the ones that perhaps do maybe don't subject themselves to it um, but at Armageddon it will very much make its force you know, it, 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 its presence felt it will remove the, mm -hmm. uh, the rulers of that time and <coughs> it will very much be a, a, a rulership that um, you know, will not be just something that's perceived it will be something that is very much in evidence. Mm -hmm. so, 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 are you happy if we read um, the second sub? Yeah, yeah. Um, who, yeah. who rules? Who will rule with Jesus? Jesus yeah. does not rule alone. Persons from every tribe and tongue and people and nation are to rule as kings over the earth. Revelation five nine ten. How many will rule with Christ? Since Christ came to earth, millions of Christians have become his followers but only 144,000 of them go to heaven to rule with Jesus. Read Revelation 14, 1-4. All other Christians on earth will become citizens of the kingdom. Psalm 37, 29. This is what really concerned me a little bit when I read this. Okay. I, I, certainly, okay. I, I certainly don't see two classes of Christians or two classes of believers. It sort of um, strikes me as sort of um, the sort of teaching of um, the brethren, the di the di the dis 
the dispensational teachings that um, uh, the Jews live on the earth eternally, the church go to heaven eternally. So you've got two classes no, of believers. Uh, it's, it's, it's not well. It's not well. It, it's not quite like that. But of I can see how not. you might feel that of way. Of course, yeah, it's yeah. not. But it is similar in some sense to dispensationalism, which my own background is in the Pentecostal Church, and um, I was baptized in 1985, and um, lots of Pentecostal groups, certainly then, adopted dispensational teaching just as as fact. You know, they, just, the the main teaching you, being you, the rapture. I'm not familiar with the word. Dispensational. I know what a dispensation is. It's when you let somebody off and you, you, you don't charge them with something. You know, you, you dispense with uh, a, 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 something that you perhaps have, have the right to expect. So dispensational. Just explain what what it means. How it's applied. It's a it's a type of theology started in the eighteen hundreds, as lots of theology start in the eighteen hundreds, by a guy called John yeah. Nelson Darby. And he said okay. that there's seven dispensations. People are saved in seven different ways by doing seven different things in seven different dispensations. And oh, okay. the, the key thing that sort of links it all together would be that you've got to take the Bible literally. There's a little mnemonic laser. So you take the Bible literally. Laser, L-A. Yeah. The church is an afterthought. Christ only came to save the Jews. He's not interested in the church or Gentiles, they were just an afterthought so it's all focused on the Jews and Israel well, but that's not true I'm not a dispensationalist no, no, I, well, I'm, so I'm explaining not something I don't believe what other people believe yeah, um, that, we're, we're here to establish the truth not, not, not to get dragged into other people's kind of well, I'm just pointing out it's very very similar no no it, it was just something, something I, 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 you know, dispensational so, well, okay. you asked me to okay. explain it um they they have seven dispensations, seven different ways of getting saved in different dispensations. Although since 1967, when the Schofield Bible was revised and moderated, um, thank goodness there are now progressive dispensationalists who don't believe that. They believe people are saved right. the same way in each dispensation. Okay. Um, the last two were very significant. So, so Robert, just a minute. Let's let's use our time wisely. So Can I respectfully? You did ask me moment, to explain. No, so so. Just a minute. It, it was what we're interested in is is you said that this seemed dispensational. Yes, it does. And what, it I, what I'm saying to you is, it might seem that way, but we don't need a, a, a detailed explanation of what dispensational means. It's just well, I I, 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 I think a, that a, Judge a Rutherford just yeah. I think that Judge 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 Rutherford in the in, ni in the 1930s just adopted dispensational teaching with a few adaptions. So this is oh, where Judge Rutherford you, got the doctrine from. The last two points are E and R. An earthly hope for the Jews is E, and R is the rapture. The rapture is the key event that every dispensationalist believes. The rapture separates the church from the Jews eternally. The church gets raptured to heaven, the Jews live on the earth eternally. But, that, but that's not true. The Bible doesn't say that. I don't, so I don't, I don't believe that. No, I don't so, believe so that. not waste let's not waste time discussing what other people believe let's try and establish the truth we could go off in endless amounts of, of, of distractions yeah but what we want to do is just establish this basic question what is the kingdom but it seems dispensational to you but when we read it so when we look at well, it, it's not yeah. dispensational theology in this book but Rutherford would have borrowed from dispensationalism it's, it's clearly obvious that the 144,000 teaching has been borrowed from, dis, uh, from American evangelical Christians in the 1930s by Judge Rutherford and that belief is known as dispensationalism Rutherford just, just borrowed and, uh, and adapted it so it's, so, it's not the so same how, it's different. How, how do you know that? Because, because you, the you, you've put two and two together and you've drawn that conclusion. Because You're welcome the, to do that, but but it's actually quite arrogant to say Judge Rutherford did this because he you did speak with such authority because you know it. So, well, why don't we just look at the scriptures? Because the scriptures tell us that there are kings and there are priests in heaven, and kings and priests okay. have subjects. All right. Yeah. So it's kind of like, so so and, and and we can also see that 144,000 is a literal number. So it, it's not figurative number; it's a literal number. Because if, you know, so if we were to read the scripture, all right, it, let's do that. Yeah. So, um, so we're looking at um, Revelation fourteen one to four. Yeah. Yeah. 
says, when I saw Rook, the lamb standing on Mount Zion and with him, 144,000 who have his name and the name of his father written on their forehead. So in other words, they have separate names. Right? I heard the sound coming out of heaven, like the sound of many waters, and like the sound of loud thunder. And the sound that I heard was like singers who accompany them by playing on their harps. And they were singing what seemed to be a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. And no one was able to mark that song except the 144,000 who had been bought from the earth. These are the ones who did not defile themselves with women. In fact, they are virgins. They are the ones who keep following the Lamb no matter where he goes. These were bought from among mankind as first fruits to God and to the Lamb. Okay. So, when we, get, when we read this, um, we see here that the 144,000 originate from the earth. Yeah? So, we can see that they are now taken to heaven. But we also, um, if we just go on a little bit here, uh, it actually says that, um, where's the verse that I wanted? I mean, I mean, surely um, these 144,000, which is simply the number 12 squared and 10 yeah. cubed, it's the number of perfection and completion squared and cubed, um, they are Jewish male virgins, right? Because who, who, who says that? Well, verse 4, these are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. So so just a moment, so why are they, why, 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 a few moments ago you said that they were, um, the Jews would be confined to the earth. No, 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 I did not. I did not say that, sir. I said that's what dispensationists okay. believe, and I point out the only two, okay. the only two groups in 2,000 years of church history that I've ever found who believe you have two groups of people, one group goes to heaven, the other group lives on the earth, are American evangelical Christians, whose belief usually, not in every case, but usually is called dispensationalism, they believe that, and the other group would be Jehovah's Witnesses since the year 1935, where Judge Rutherford, in my very strong opinion, simply had a problem when the number of Jehovah's Witnesses started to exceed 144,000, so he adapted he didn't copy, he adapted with some changes American evangelical theology and he said something similar to them that one group goes to heaven, the 144,000 and the other group lives on the earth but these, these, these people are virgins they are Jewish, they are male and they're, they're virgins there, there are no women amongst this group if you're going to take the group literally so only men and only Jews go to heaven in your opinion. No, I never said that. I, well, never, I never said that. That's <laughs> not what I believe. If you're going to... You said the 144,000 number is literal. Well, if the 144,000 yeah. number is literal, I don't believe it is. I just believe it's a spiritual number. It's, it's completion and perfection squared and cubed. So it's a reference okay. to the church. But it's, it re refers to them as Jewish male virgins. No women and no one who has had intimacy with a woman. They are virgins. Obviously that refers to spiritual purity. It's not to be taken literally. Just as the yeah. number 144,000 isn't to be taken literally, surely. Well, so, so here's the thing. Um, so let me just... Um... Please don't think I am a dispensationalist. I most certainly am not. That's my background. I came yeah. away from Pentecostalism. I reject, um, you know, the idea there are millions of people speaking in tongues and raising the dead and working miracles today. I think yeah. it's nonsense. And I yeah, reject too, dispensational yeah. theology that I was taught as a fact, as biblical truth. The fact I can talk with some knowledge about it because I used to be in it 
for many years. Yeah, understood. No, understood. That, that doesn't okay. mean that and that doesn't sense. mean Matt that yeah. I am a dispensationalist. I'm not. Thank, th- no. thank you. Thank no. you. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah. so just comparing the, the other verse that talks about 144,000 as a, 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 a as a literal number, we're just going to Revelation seven verse four. Right, I'll just get there. Okay. Okay. Revelation similar to one, I heard the number of those that were sealed, 144,000, sealed out of every tribe of the sons of Israel. Israel. And then go to verse, so, so just a moment. So, we can deal with what is Israel. So there is literal Israel and there is spiritual Israel. So, this is a separate subject. But just Let's just hold that in, in abeyance for the moment. And then in verse 9, And I saw and looked a great crowd, which no man was able to number, out of all the nations and tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne, before the Lamb, dressed in white robes, and there were palm branches in their hands. Um, And they keep shouting with a loud voice, Salvation we owe to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. So, why would, just a question, why why would a so-called figurative number of 144,000 be compared with a number that you can't uh, that, 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 which no man is able to number surely there's a comparison here between a literal number and a number that, 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 you know, that can't be quantified you know, because of a, a, a time or, or, or circumstance or, or whatever it's, the number in the great crowd who will be saved will be Jehovah will know what that number is at the point at which he saves them so that's why it can't be known. That's why you know it, well, it's not. Pastor not for, Russell not did. Say, um, Pastor Russell kind of, did uh, give the number in his book, The Finished Mystery. He gives the number at just over three hundred million. So, uh, the Finished Mystery has, has been not a reference book for um, many, many years. So. But it's referred to on JW Broadcasting quite a lot. No, it's not. I've 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 seen them ref- so, refer to Pastor Russell's works, including the Finnish mystery. Um, what puzzled me was so, 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 just just so just 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 a minute. Again, we 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 kind of go off topic, but what what we want to do is just answer this question about. And I heard the number of those who were said one hundred forty-four thousand, and. You've missed out. Which no man was able to number. So you, what I'm, what my question is: You've missed why out. Why? Wh- you've missed out of all the tribes of Israel. And then in verse five, it says that the tribe of Judah was sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe right. of Reuben was sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Gad was sealed twelve thousand. It mentions um, uh, some of the tribes, or most of the tribes. It misses out Dan, I think. Um, now, how can this be a sp- if you believe that this is literal, not spiritual, or, or what do you believe? Do you believe the number 144,000 is literal or spiritual? Do you believe these tribes are literal or, or spiritual? And do you believe the number 12,000 is literal or spiritual? So, I th- well, so, so I think there's a much simpler explanation than all of that, which is Paul's explanation of what is really Israel. So, the Apostle Paul obviously was um, was a Jew, was a Pharisee. You know, we, we all know the story that he wanted to devastate the congregation. You know, he was more zealous for the the, the ways of his uh, of his forefathers than than uh, others. And then the road to Damascus, he realizes that actually he is opposing Christ, and then becomes one of Christ's most passionate. Uh, he has to leave behind the ways of Judaism. He has to leave those traditions behind. Everything to do with you know all of the uh, the laws and traditions uh, and uh, and festivals. <clears throat> so then they are no longer you know um, acceptable worship. And there was a reason why you know the curtain was was torn in two at, at the point of Jesus' death. You know, the, the Jewish system was broken. The Jewish system was had, had been abandoned. The Jewish system had been um, redundant for many years. But at that point, so Jesus becomes the way, the truth, and the life in the respect that, well, in many ways, but particularly the, the Jewish way of worshiping was no longer acceptable, and 
um, if Paul had have remained part of that, he would have been un 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 he would have remained unacceptable. So he had to make a fundamental shift. He had to make a fundamental change. He did. He could not continue as a Jew. I I, 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 I know all this, and I'd see Revelation oh, seven so as why, spiritual. So, so just a moment. So let me ask you a question. So why are we talking about those those tribes being literal tribes of Israel? I don't, I don't, I don't, and I never said that. I don't believe they're literal tribes. I'm asking you a question. Let me read Revelation 7, 4. You read it quickly, I'm going to read it slowly. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Now, do you take Revelation 7, 4 literally, or do you take it spiritually? I take it spiritually. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right, Matt. But you either take it literally or you take it spiritually. You can't say you take the first half of verse four literally, and you take the second half, which refers to the children of Israel, spiritually. Either either it's all literal, hundred and forty four thousand, and of all the tribes of the children of Israel, is all literal, or you take it all spiritual. I heard a number of those who were sealed, one hundred forty four thousand, sealed out of the tribe of the sons of Israel. Literal or spiritual? I don't, I, I, I don't think it's as black and white as that. Well, it, it has to be one of those two. Literal, it, just, just, Robert, just a minute, just a minute. Right. Are you familiar with... Um, let me just find the passage I want to share with you then. Um, I'm asking a perfectly reasonable question. Do you take it yeah. literal or do you take it spiritual? Because then... Well, I just said to you, I don't think... It, it's, I think the number is literal. Yeah. But given the... Um, given the verses at um, Galatians 3, no. 28 and 29, Paul is talking about... You know, um, let me just go to... The, let me just give me a moment. The one about being neither Jew nor Gentile, bond nor free, male or female, all one in Christ. Is that the verse you're thinking of? Um, it's actually before that, I think. No. Um, so it is, um, okay. Oh, here we are. All right. Okay. So... Um, Okay, sorry, I apologise. I've gone to the wrong place. So, yes, it, Romans 9 and verse 6. I'm not familiar with this Bible that I'm using. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, you know, uh, uh, um, it, it's the fact that someone is a Jew on the inside. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I not, not a literal Jew. I, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that, yeah. Yeah, um, right, okay. yeah I'm fully aware of that passage. Go, going back to Revelation 7 4, and I heard the number so this, so, of. So just a moment, so we're answering the question by using the scripture, which is talking about Revelation 7 4. So it's, your, your question was is it all literal or is it all spiritual? So I'm saying to you, I think the number is literal, but what you have to do to answer the question is look at it in the context of Romans 9. And Romans 2, which defines what Israel is. So it's not literal Israel, but literal Israel as we know, no longer had God's approval. It is clearly a different description of Israel which is defined by what Paul you know, um, documents and defines Israel as being. In other words, a spiritual Israelite, someone who actually is um, someone that God has selected and who... You know, right, so... So, Matt, Revelation 7, 4, you take the number 144,000 literal, but when it says yeah. all the tribes of the children of Israel, you take that spiritually. I heard the number yeah, of them that were sealed, and there were sealed, this is literal, 144,000 of, 
and yeah. now we take this spiritual all the tribes of the children of Israel yeah right that doesn't kind of make any sense that in the same context half of it's literal and half of it's spiritual I mean read the next verse of the tribe of Judah was sealed 12,000 do you believe Judah is literal or spiritual and do you believe the 12,000 is literal or spiritual so how so just as we can't see the structure within heaven um, I don't know how the 144,000 are you know, kind of um, why one person would be in one tribe and another person would be in another tribe what I know is that the one selected must be of outstanding moral character ones that have individually received a token and that Jehovah takes them to heaven and they become immortal so in other words even Jehovah can't take the um, immortality away from them and that um, that provides the ultimate answer to Satan which is that uh, that um, uh, that we that, that individuals would only serve Jehovah for what they could get that they are ultimately selfish and can't be trusted in, in, so in, what Jehovah is saying is he can trust them implicitly <coughs> and that they have been integrity keepers you know maybe you know, to, to their own death I mean to, 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 to the point at which they um, you know when, when they die at the end of their life or under tests such as people like uh, you know people who have been executed or, or you know have been exceptional integrity keepers um but it's Jehovah who selects them. It, it's not, you know, it, it, it's not for me to go. That person's anointed, and that person's not. Um, in that Revelation seven five, yeah. where it says, "Of the tribe of Judah was sealed twelve thousand. Do you take Judah yeah. as literal or spiritual? And do you take the twelve thousand as literal or spiritual? So the number is literal, and Judah is a, it, it, it's clearly a, a reference to the, the literal nation of Israel. So that must be. A, um, a, 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 a not a literal reference because of what it says at, at Romans nine and Romans two. So Judah is literal or spiritual? Um, metaphorical. It's metaphorical. Okay, so it's not literal. Yeah. But the number twelve thousand is literal. Well, it, it, it's 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 a it's a twelve hundred forty four thousand. So I. I I'm, yeah, I mean, I, I'm taking that literally. Yes. Um, not all the tribes are mentioned here. Um, there's no such. There's no mention of the tribe of Dan. And in verse nine, you have mention of the tribe of. Is it in verse? No, eight. Uh, it mentions the tribe of Joseph, which doesn't exist. Of the well, tribe of Joseph was sealed twelve thousand. So the fact right. that a tribe that doesn't even exist is mentioned proves that this must all be spiritual. It cannot be. Literal. So, so, Robert, it doesn't prove that the tribe of Joseph um, is mentioned uh, in, in the. Uh, I've got the. I've got the, uh, the. What's it on the wall here? The. Uh, I've got the, uh, the promised seed. Um, the. the um, It says in verse 6 of the tribe of Manasseh was sealed 12,000. There's no reference to Ephraim. But instead of Ephraim, you have Joseph mentioned. Right. Very strangely. So, but Joseph was um, the tribe of Manasseh and Ephraim fell under Joseph. Yeah. I'm just saying, in this passage, there is no mention of Ephraim. There is mention of Manasseh. So, There's no mention of the tribe of Dan. And so the idea that no one is going to be saved out of the tribe of Dan is rather ridiculous. And there's no such tribe as the tribe of Joseph. There were two half tribes, Ephraim and Manasseh. So the, the 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 writer of Revelation, John, the Apostle John, is telling us in no uncertain terms that this is spiritual. This is applied to all the people in church history who are going to be saved. They're not literal um Jews, so, 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 Jewish so Robert, male virgins. So, 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 this is this, this is all this is all spiritual. Just a moment, just a moment, just a moment, just a moment. You speak with such authority that these are established facts and everybody should know these things, but there are some really fundamental things that you've missed here. Is okay. that how, how could 
Jehovah take all of, you know, Christendom to heaven, when many of them believe different things, when there are people amongst that number who would be, you know, kind of, uh, um, should be removed from the congregation, they show no respect for Jehovah's name, they don't even know the relationship between the Father and the Son. So, Jehovah isn't going to take all of these people to heaven. I, 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 never, I never said that. You're, you, you're, so, you're creating a straw man. I never said every single person in the entire world who goes to a Baptist church, Methodist church, Anglican church, Catholic church, Pentecostal church is going to go to heaven. I never, heaven. I never said that and I don't believe that. I believe there are a minority of people in all the churches who are in covenant with God who have uh, right. who, who are indwelt by the Holy Spirit, who is the seal, um, Ephesians one thirteen, of the promise of salvation. So, so how can it be? How can it be that that you've got people who believe wildly different things who will all go to heaven when the Spirit, as we said the other day, causes oneness? That there should be a oneness of the Spirit, and that Jesus said, you know, that that they be one as we are one. In other words, Jesus and his Father are united in purpose. His followers are united mm -hmm. in purpose. Mm -hmm. So how, how, how are all these people who, who have wildly different beliefs mm -hmm. and, you know, argue, they, you know, argue them? They're not, they're interested can I, can in their I own reply? opinion. Can they're, I reply, Matt? They're not. Go on, then. Yeah. Because people are not saved from their sins. It's called double imputation. Christ's righteousness is applied to me. My sins are given to, to Christ. That happens to people who enter into the new covenant, not because of what I have done or what other people have done or what they believe. Because if people are saved on the basis of their belief, no one would be saved. Because no one, including myself, gets everything absolutely 100% right. People are saved on the basis of their faith, which means their trust in Christ. I trust in Christ, that's the basis of my salvation. Not what I believe, not what I get right, not all the good deeds that I've done. It's okay, Christ. So, okay. So, so, so that, but, sorry, we, we, we're now yeah. talking about a different subject. All right, well, we'll, we'll go back to I'm Revelation not, 7. Can, can't so, you... So, you, you so, what, so there's a basic fundamental thing here, which is, you're saying, is it literal or is it spiritual? I'm trying really hard to answer the question. And what what... You don't seem very open to looking at something in your own Bible that actually suggests a different view. Well, show me, show show me where this number one hundred and forty-four thousand is literal, because remember, well, in Revelation so, no, fourteen, so, 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 in Revelation fourteen, so one to four, they are Jewish male virgins. So if you take it literally, you believe it's all going to be taken not, literally. No, so, they are Jewish, not, they are male, and they Jewish are virgins. Virgin. Robert, Robert, I'm getting really tired of this now. We're not here to argue. We're here to have a peaceful conversation, and I'm trying to present something to you yeah, that you okay, can then go away and think about. So why not write these down? Yeah. So you're asking, is it spiritual or is it literal? Yeah. And I'm saying the number is a literal number, but that number, because of Romans 9 and Romans 2, cannot be literal Israel. It cannot be male virgins. Agreed. It, it, Agreed. It's, it's ridiculous to so, say it's it, it's ridiculous to say the hundred and forty four thousand are all male Jewish virgins. It applies to all Christians throughout all the church age. You're the one who brought that up. I'm, I'm saying so. You, you, you press me on the point of is it literal? Is it spiritual? I'm trying to answer your question. Yeah. I'm trying to show you the references. Yeah. So, so Romans but, nine and verse six. I I I, I know. It's spiritual. I, under, I, 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 I fully understand that. Yeah. But in Revelation 7-9, so after I, this... So, I, so, just... So there's a really basic point here, is that they have subjects. So it isn't, what you said, dispensational. It's the fact I'm not a dispensationalist. I'm not a dispensationalist. I say you are. I'm saying... <laughs> that it, it's, it's, it's not because of a having to shoehorn a relief match something else and the numbers get too high and you've got to change it what, that's actually really disrespectful I think we need to draw a real line here and say let's just show, show some respect and let's be willing to listen well it's true 
when the Jeho number of Jehovah's Witnesses went over 144,000, I think it was 1935, Judge Rutherford came up with two classes of believers. Anointed class who go to heaven and a, uh, a great crowd who, who live on the earth. Now, the only two groups who believe that some Christians go to heaven and some other believers go on the earth are dispensationalists and Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm just making that right. that point. I so think Revelation. Are we interested in, 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 in? Are we interested in establishing the truth? Are yes. we interested in in your kind of like you, you, you know your musings on what happened then? You weren't there in 1935. You have just put these pieces together and you presumptuously say those things. Could it just be? that the truth was being revealed over time and that it became apparent that that was the case at that point or does it have to be some cynical reason well no really because I don't like your turn Robert because I I, in, I, don't, I I don't need to talk to somebody who adopts that tone about things that are really really honest and open and true so why not look at these scriptures and this will answer your question about that what is Israel is not really Israel and then you'll be able to see the reason behind the fact that the number is literal but actually that the, the, the it isn't you know, the male virgins as you've said I know you don't believe that but it, it shows you the reasoning behind the numbers literal and the the, 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 the description uh, of Israel must match what Paul talks about in Romans 9 and Romans 2 so I, I'm, Romans I'm fully aware of Romans 9 and number and, and Romans 2. You right. don't need to show so, me that. So I, I know those verses can, can very well. Not, can you not put those things together then? It's like, yeah, it's spiritual. Is clearly saying. It's, ab it's absolutely, it's, it's all spiritual, including the number 144,000. If you go to Revelation 7, 9, can I just read it, please? After this, so, so after you've got the 144,000 mentioned in Revelation 7, 4, it then goes through the tribes. 12,000 from 12 different tribes with I Dan. I read this very same verse to you 10 minutes ago. Yeah, I know, but I'd like to a, a you, that, you no, read it, but I was not able to comment on it. I'd like to comment on it because Revelation 7, 9 comments on Revelation. It, it's basically a mirror image of, of verse 4. It explains what verse 4 is talking about. After this I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hand. Now it says, before the throne. The throne here is in heaven, because we read in Revelation 4.2 that the throne is in heaven. It's not on the earth. Um, Revelation 4.2 And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. So the 144,000 of verse 4 is the great crowd from all nations and all kindreds and all peoples, male and female. It, 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 so, what you're, so what you're saying is that these, that they're actually describing the same group? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Because the great okay, crowd well, is in heaven. In Revelation okay. 19, verse 1. Um, let, let me just read that. Do you have your book? Can you read in your Bible, Revelation 19.1? So, so just a moment, so, so let's just stick with Revelation 7. So if you read verse 14, so right away I said to him, my Lord, you are the one who knows. And he said, these are the ones that come out of the great tribulation. And they've washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So these ones are not in heaven. These ones are on the earth. These ones survived the great tribulation. They came out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. These are people yeah. who've been, who've died, and they're they're with Christ in heaven. Mm, uh, okay. Because the throne. Uh, what it says is they come, they should come out of the great yeah, tribulation. Yeah, they come out of the great tribulation because they've been they've been they've been killed. Um, um it doesn't say that. Well. How have they come out of the Great Tribulation? So, so, so Robert, just, just a moment. Yeah. I really have got no appetite for a, a... You're very happy with what you believe. I'm very happy for you. But we, you know... The scriptures simply don't say that. You know? That if you go right back to the beginning, God's original purpose was for Adam to live forever. Adam could never have died. Now, that was the intention, that was God's purpose. 
God's purpose for the earth is to have people live on it forever. Yes, Revelation 5.10, they shall reign upon the earth. Revelation 5.10. Wow. So there, there are many... A, a verse that's very, in the Psalms or it's very significant to me. About living forever. So the ones who come out of the Great Tribulation, the Great Tribulation is the, the Great Tribulation on earth. You know that... Um, yes, it, yes. That, 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 that precedes Armageddon. Yes, absolutely. So, great Tribulation is okay. not in heaven. Great Tribulation is on earth. And these people have come through the Great Tribulation. They've been killed. And now they're with Christ in heaven. Could you read right, Revelation 19, could you please read Revelation 19.1, because it says that the great crowd is in heaven, and after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven, I think your Bible says great crowd, saying, Alleluia, salvation, and glory, and honor, and power unto the Lord our God. Would you please read it in your New World Translation, Revelation chapter 19, verse 1, please, Matt. After these things I heard that was a loud voice of a great crowd in heaven. So there's the great crowd in heaven. The great crowd is in heaven. Right. Okay, so so when we kind of look at the cross-reference for that, um, we go to Daniel 7. There was a stream of fire flowing and going out from before him. There were a thousand thousands that kept ministering to him, and ten thousand times ten thousand that kept standing right before him. The court took its seat, and there were books that were open. So, who's to say that the great crowd that's described in Revelation 19 isn't periods and myriads of angels in heaven? It can't be, because the great crowd in heaven in Revelation 19, verse 1, have come from the earth, and they have been saved. But it doesn't say that. Doesn't say, so you're putting pieces together and the Bible doesn't say that it can't be a reference to, to angels it's a reference to human beings and after these things wow. I heard a great Just voice a you, 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 say this, you say this with such authority but you may be sweeping statements but you're not supporting them why? Can't well you're not allowing me to read <laughs> um, I'd, I'd have to read you see these this great crowd in Revelation 19.1, they take part in the marriage supper of the Lamb. They have been redeemed from the earth. Okay? So they're but not they angels. The same, that were, they were not angels. The same ones they're not, they're not, been, they're, they're not angels taking part in the marriage supper of the Lamb. And it's not angels that have been redeemed from the earth. It's saints of God. So it says the great crowd is in heaven, Matt. So who are the... Um, Who are the kings and priests that exist in heaven? Well, the, the kings and priests would be the saints of saints of God. I think I think Second Peter two eight or two nine somewhere around there it talks about saints of God being kings and kings and priests. Right. It certainly wouldn't so, be the angels. No, we're not saying the, the, the you were talking about the great crowd. Uh, you know. You're making the assumption it's the same great crowd, which is a you know I, I can see how you could get that. But the, the the point is there are some in heaven who are kings and they're priests. My question to you is who are their subjects? Well, I guess I guess the angels, as they will have a higher position than the angels. So they will rule over the angels. So mm -hmm. when someone when someone dies, you know in a church you know, of any particular description so a Pentecostal faithful person that you say is you know has God's approval he goes to heaven or she goes to heaven and then they rule over the angels so somebody else in different well, church well not at that, that, that just, I, I think just it, a minute just, just that's a minute, not what I said the question so no, I, I'm just I'm trying to understand what you said I'm saying is this what I, have I understood correctly so you're what you, what you said was, you, you used a form of words which was, you know, um, faithful ones who've been born in Christ, you know, not every Christian, but some, is what you said. And you said that those people would go to heaven and that they would form some form of, of kingdom in heaven and they would rule... In the, the eternal, in, in, in the eternal state... All right, I believe that Revelation chapter 5 verse 10 says they shall reign upon the earth. 
So I'd see yeah, the because, new earth as the eternal state for for so God's God's is, people. Is there, a, is there a future? Could I finish? Or? Could I finish? But um, I do believe that the reigning over the angels will be in the eternal state, not at the present time. Okay, well that's the detail, but there's nothing in the Bible that says they would rule over the angels. The angels, uh, you know, are, you know, their ultimate authority is Jehovah, and Jesus is the archangel. He is the, the most superior angel. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. the firstborn of all creation, he had a beginning. The well, had a beginning. we're going on to a different topic now. Revelation, sorry, yeah, Colossians yeah. one, Colossians oh. one fifteen is prototokos in the Greek, firstborn. Protokiskos right. means first created. So, if Paul wished to say that Christ is the first created thing, he would have written protokiskos in Colossians one fifteen. He didn't. He wrote prototokos preeminent. All right. So your point being, well. Prototokos doesn't mean first created. It doesn't mean that Christ is created. But that's that that's mentioned so in it, chapter so, fifteen. So when it first, so when that's mentioned in first that's mentioned in that's mentioned in chapter fifteen. I would prefer to look at that because I'd have a lot okay. I'd have a lot to comment on that. For instance, Manasseh is what? firstborn in Genesis forty one fifty one. But then if you right. go to Jeremiah thirty one nine, his twin brother Ephraim is firstborn. And the obvious explanation is that firstborn has to do with inheritance rights, the right of primogenitor. It's to do with position or rank. It doesn't mean born first of all, because Manasseh was firstborn, Genesis 41, 51. And then his twin brother Ephraim, after Manasseh lost the birthright due to his sin, his twin brother Ephraim is firstborn in Jeremiah 31, 9. I'm sorry, but this is... Fine points, Robert, fine yeah. points. Could, could, could the I... simple truth is, just, just, just a minute, just a minute. We, we keep dancing around uh, these points. Yeah, it's, it's best to deal with so, one let's, thing let's, at let's a time. Let's draw a conclusion. Let's draw a, com no, let's draw a conclusion. So, the, what you're saying is that, that the, the um, Revelation 7 and 4 is all spiritual and that the number is not specific and that... Um, those that go to heaven are, are, are kings and priests and uh, they're all of them they don't have to be united they could come from different churches and that they rule over the angels that's that's the summary of what we've discussed over the last hour um revelation chapter 4 verse 9 says after this i beheld and lo a great multitude which no one could number that's a reference to right. the 144,000. Right, right because there, there's the there's only that's one. It's referring to the same number, not a different. Not it's referring different. to the same group. The hundred and forty-four thousand are okay. the great multitude. Remember. So, so, so let me just, let me ask you a really important question. How settled are you that this is correct in your head? Well, I haven't found anyone who can refute this. Right. You know, I'm Respectful, very interested. You don't listen for long enough to, for someone to talk to you about it. Well, you're very. Well, I, 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 I presented you with Romans nine. And I believe yeah, Romans it. 9. You actually need to right. read the verse. But I believe... Let's go to Romans 9. So who are spiritual... So who, who are spiritual Israelites? What do you have to do to become a but, spiritual Israelite? You have to trust in Christ. Because salvation is not by joining a religious group or going to some building on a Sunday or a Saturday, as the Seventh-day Adventists believe. It's, not. it's, it's trusting... Agape, which I it's trusting night. in Christ that Jehovah, the Father has presented Christ as the Messiah and it's faith or trust in Christ and I found something in Revelation 19 what, um, verse 2 which so I do a, just a moment, just can, a moment. can I please let me let's not move. No, let's not. I, I do I, want to comment I remember I said so a great we, we, crowd we just, in heaven just, Revelation want, 2 we, but I want to talk about oh. the point that you have just made that you spend so much time talking you don't spend a lot of time listening it's, it's my great problem, so, isn't it? Right. So, please listen. You just said it's being, you know, it, it's accepting the Christ. That is right. But what we have to do is look from Jehovah's viewpoint about what is acceptable to him. So what part does obedience play in being? It's not whether we've decided we want to serve God or not. It's whether we are obedient 
do yeah. the things he's asked us to do yeah. and how is de- obedience defined yeah trusting in key. trusting so, so, so what, yeah let me let me let me reply trusting in christ is called justification basically i am i to sum it up in one word justification obeying christ comes after justification and that's called sanctification it's explained in romans chapter 8 so once you have been given salvation then you're going to want to obey christ obey the will of jehovah god live a holy life because you love god and that's called sanctification when we die our bodies go into the ground and rot but at christ's second coming when christ comes back those bodies will be raised up and they will be glorified human bodies just as christ at the moment has a glorified okay. human so body the, 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 the so there's so three parts to it justification it, it, then sanctification then glorification it. and it's mentioned in romans 8 20 28 to 30 some somewhere around so it, there the sequence is actually the other way around you cannot be justified unless you have are are sanctified it, 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 it's not that you go oh right i'll try and I, I, I'll embrace Christ now and, 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 I, and, and, and I'll live by my own standards. In order to be clean in God's sight, you have to reject certain things and accept certain things. And that's on a minute by minute basis. That isn't going to a building on the weekend, as we rightly said. So, it, 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 it's, so um, you know, King David talked about, you know, from Jehovah's standpoint, it is unthinkable. So what we have to do is think about, well, what is acceptable from Jehovah's standpoint? Now, the reason that your, your, your whole line of reason doesn't stack up is that people in different religions believe different things. And there are many of those things that the Bible does not support. And you know, whether it's behavior, you know, there are people who, you know, What's really interesting is, is the disfellowshipping arrangement puts a very clear distinction between what's acceptable and what's not and keeps the congregation clean. No other church has that, and yeah, it absolutely oh, mandates. Come on, man, you don't know what you're talking about, Matt. Matt, you don't know what you're talking about. Honestly, you're just making this up. You, 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 can't, okay, you, Robert, can't, you Robert, cannot Robert, pontificate Robert. on other churches where you clearly do not know what you're talking about. Sorry. Do they have a disfellowshipping arrangement? Yes, yes. Some of them, some of them, some of them do. Yeah, it's not Which called disfellowshipping. Um, in Catholicism, it's called excommunication. Right. And there was a, a watchtower from nineteen forty, the nineteen forties. There was an old watchtower from the nineteen. Tell me, let me finish. Let me finish. You interrupt. You cut me off again. You keep cutting me off. There was an old watchtower from the nineteen forties saying. <coughs> Um, the Roman Catholics Robert, excommuni- I'm, I'm really tired I'm, I'm sorry this is a, this is you a cut me off thing. again I'm in the middle of a sentence and you, you cut me off can I just finish oh, I, I, with no, one no. thing I, I'm, I'm really Revelation 19 now, 1 if Robert, you read verse just, 2 it's applicable to no let me finish let me finish I want to read Revelation 19 1 and 2 because the great crowd in verse 2 is explained as people who have died for the faith and who have given their blood for, for Christ um, after the, and after these things I heard a great voice of much people your Bible says great crowd in heaven saying alleluia salvation and glory and honour and power unto the Lord our God for great and righteous are his judgments for he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand and if you read down this great crowd get to be in the marriage supper of the lamb which doesn't apply to angels it only applies to human beings so the great crowd are human beings who've been redeemed from the earth robert go with your beliefs that you're obviously very happy with and at the point when all of this becomes apparent the catholic church does not you know there are so I, I, I gave up so on church in 2010. I don't go to any church. I just, I just want you to be happy with what you believe. But if you tell me, it's laughable that you say that the Catholic Church, actually, it has something it calls excommunication, but 
Can you give me an example where it's actually been executed, actually been carried out? Um, yes, Pope John Paul II uh, excommunicated a um, archbishop, I think he was from Switzerland, who disagreed with him on some point of doctrine. And he was he was right. excommunicated so what, about, what about about what, twenty what, what about. Let me finish. You cut me off again. Let me ask he, no, yes, let me. You cut me off again. He was excommunicated. He, he was excommunicated about twenty five years ago, and I cannot remember right. the archbishop's but, name. But that's